Hi, welcome to session two of our power planning series. And we're going to be talking today about overcoming resistance. I'm Heather Christie, and I'm here with Mark Sanborn, and we're going to be telling you all about resistance today and bringing you through some great exercises. Now, last session, we really talked about the importance of goal setting. And if you didn't catch that session, please go back and listen to session one. But Mark, do you have some thoughts about our last session and just the importance of goal setting? Well, we talked about goal setting and also the formula for power planning, but my friend Art Holtz, who is 92 or three years of age, has lived a very full life. If you're a real football fanatic and you're old enough, you remember Art Holst as a, a great referee in the NFL. But he also writes poetry, and he wrote this uh, little poem about goals that I think is pretty appropriate to what we've been talking about and what we're going to talk about. This is his poem called Goals. Art says, as I pause to think of something that sets some folks apart, it seemed to me that goals in life should be the place to start. Imagine playing football on an unmarked field of green. Not a goal line to be sought, not a goal post to be seen. It would be an aimless battle were there nothing to be gained. Without a thing to strive for, not a goal to be attained. We must have purpose in our lives, for the flame that warms the soul is an everlasting vision. Every man and woman must have a goal. And that's what we talked about last time, having notable goals, sane goals, and the end was for notable, that really would help you create the kind of vision that you have for your life, for your business, for your relationships. However, you can't get there without overcoming the inevitable resistance. And that's what we're going to talk about now. I love that poem. And it's so true. I'm pretty sure that I would not be watching the Chicago Bears play ball if there were no score. Well, at times, maybe that would actually be more exciting. But anyway, let's talk about resistance. And you know what's interesting about resistance? Uh, the more that I've studied this, and I know that sounds crazy, I've actually studied resistance. But the more that I study it, I really recognize that the funny thing about resistance is it's not necessarily something that we are aware of. I read an amazing book by Stephen Pressfield. I don't know if you've read this book, Mark. It's called the war of art not to be confused with the art of war and stephen pressfield if you haven't heard of him before as an author he was also the author of the legend of bagger vance so you may have heard of that or seen that movie anyway he has a, one of the most amazing descriptions of resistance that i've ever read before and i've read it a number of times he talks about the fact that you know resistance is is everywhere in our lives and anytime we're going after growth in particular in any area this thing called resistance is going to pop up one of our goals in this segment is to really talk to you about what resistance is and have you get in tune with what your resistance looks like how does it show up it doesn't show up the same for all of us so mark do you have any thoughts on resistance and and how that shows up how it's showed up for you in the past maybe well, I have a few thoughts. You know, really, resistance is nothing more than inertia. You know, I think most people think resistance is some kind of active force, and certainly it can be. You know, I can push back against an idea that you have, or I can resist doing something that you ask me to do. But the reality is, like we learned in physics, if we can remember back to our college days, you know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest stays at rest, unless what? An outside force acts upon it. A lot of people just never start. You know, they have great plans and great ideas, and they spend a lot of time noodling out, you know, the ways they'll accomplish them, but they never take the first step to create momentum, and that is action. And if you've read many books on planning or productivity, you've probably run across this. But one of the greatest techniques you can use to execute a plan is to simply set a time and a date where you will take the first step and block out a half hour or an hour and say on Tuesday, I'm going to spend from 9 to 10 working on the first action steps. As a matter of fact, when I write books, I sometimes do this. You know, the reality is I'm not always inspired when I write. But I realize that if I just grind it out, I can come back and edit later when I am inspired. And so if I only wait until I'm inspired, I might go days, weeks, months, who knows, maybe even years. The second thing that I would mention about resistance is as it affects your team. I do a lot of work in change leadership. And one of the things that I firmly believe is that if you give people a choice to do something or not to do something, they will choose not to do it. We make change optional. We make planning voluntary. 
people need to know that there are consequences, both positive and negative, if they don't overcome their own resistance and buy into the plan. Uh, sometimes, and I remember one client that asked me what to do about the fact that nobody was on board, I said they basically needed to announce that if people weren't going to buy into the plan, it didn't mean they were bad people. It just meant they were people that weren't going to be in the employ of that organization any longer. Because as long as people thought they could do what they've always done and hunker down and take up space, that was exactly what they were going to do. So really, we have to deal with the, the many aspects of resistance, both at a personal as well as at an organizational level. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about the resistance that you've just described, we see it all the time in working with corporate clients. And there's a few things that we can give you, some tools maybe that we can give you to overcome resistance, whether that's if it's a plan that you're trying to push forward with a big group of people, or even if it's just your own individual plan and your own resistance you're facing, there are a few components that we can focus on that will help you get past that resistance from, in really a practical way. The first one that I think about is the why. I think sometimes a, a plan will fail or change won't be made. People won't buy in because they don't have enough clarity on why we're doing this. Why do we have this goal that's been set? What is the purpose of it? And, you know, if you've got someone who's actually just stuck in their current thinking that, you know, the way we're doing it right now seems to be fine, I don't understand the why. You can never fully get buy-in from people if they don't understand the why. So in describing the why, we can go back to some of the things we discussed in the first session. You know, are you making this change? Are you driving towards this new result because there's some level of dissatisfaction with what you currently have? And almost always you're going to find a level of dissatisfaction or you probably wouldn't even think about making a change or setting a new goal. So really get focused on describing that level of dissatisfaction to the rest of the team. Now, Mark, I'm sure you've seen this before where you have executives who go away for a couple of days and they sit around this table and they do this strategic planning exercise and they have a lot of dialogue and they debate and they come up with these plans, these results that they're after that are hugely important for the organization. And yet when they bring it back to the company, the rest of the people in the company have not had the benefit of sitting around that table and knowing how they got where they got. So taking the time to really let people in as much as you can, of course, on the why is really going to help lower that resistance. And I'm sure you've seen that in the past when you've had to go back and explain something after the fact, and they say, oh, now I get it. <laughs> well, yeah, pe people rarely do anything without reasons that make sense. Now, there are some times where the reasons that someone in leadership thinks make sense maybe doesn't make sense to followers. It's not a perfect world. There are times when people are going to need to buy in and perform, even if they disagree. However, I agree uh, with you completely. Giving people the context, giving them the reasons why, is so important to create buy-in and get people you know, to execute or to act. In my book, The Encore Effect, I talk a little bit about passion. I, I'm not going to, in, in this podcast, get into the nuances of passion, but I think that passion can be the fuel that drives results. If you understand that passion without a process is worthless, you know, being excited about something it means nothing if you don't have a process to put that passion into. And there's really four types of passion that can help you overcome resistance. The first is passion for what you do. Now, as a speaker and an author, I get to speak on a good day for about an hour. That's what I enjoy most. But on most days that I speak for an hour, I spend six or eight hours traveling on airplanes and checking into hotel rooms. I am not passionate about that. I've been doing it for a long time, just not that passionate. So if I only think I can be passionate and overcome resistance when it's something like enjoyable, you're leaving three more passions unused. The second passion is why you do it. You know, it's that purpose that you just talked about. It's the compelling reasons. The third passion is for how you do it. Sometimes you just say, you know what, this process or this product or this service or this experience could be so much better if we just did it differently. Uh, I once designed a, a program and wrote a book about a subject that frankly I wasn't all that passionate about but I was so sick and tired of teaching the coursework as it had been given to me that I decided I was going to make it enjoyable both for me and for the audience. And the last way to overcome resistance is to use the passion of who you do it for. The who is what I call the safety net. 
If you can't be passionate about the what, the why, or the how, at least be passionate for the who. That might be your customer, might be your team member, could likely be your spouse, your kids. A lot of things I do in my life, I do with a larger purpose of being able to protect and provide for the people that I love. So those are the four kinds of passion that I found helpful in helping me overcome the resistance to not get started. I think those are great. And you're right. I see many, many executives who will tend to excel in their passion for someone else rather than just for their own benefit. So I love that fourth one that you added in there is really looking at the who. The other thing I think is important in overcoming resistance is to get clarity on the vision. What will it look like when you accomplish the goal? And even if you have some idea, do you have enough clarity on what that impact is? So go just a little bit deeper. What's the impact going to be on you personally? What's the impact going to be on your organization? What's the impact going to be at home? Because remember, whoever you are at work, you still have that person at home and and wherever you are, there you are. So what is that impact all the way around? And so look at it as a, a full circle around your life. When you get clarity on that and it's exciting enough That's something else that can really help you chip away at resistance. Well, and I think there are a few rules that people should keep in mind so they can can use that mindset part of the model that we spoke about in the last session. And that is to stop feeling guilty about the resistance they encounter. Because as Pressfield points out in his book, uh, resistance is inevitable. You know, it doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean that, you know, you face challenges others don't. We all face resistance. It is inevitable. But number two, it's overcomable. Actually, I don't know if overcomable is a word, but I just invented it if it wasn't a word before. That is to say that we can overcome resistance with a few simple techniques. One being, be clear on the why. So you have some compelling reasons or passion that will fuel your your achievement of that goal. The second one is, at the very least, start. No matter how poorly, just get started. Pick a beginning point. Don't wait until the spirit moves you. Don't wait until you're inspired. Simply pick a time and start. The third thing that I think you can do is that you can really project ahead and remind yourself of the benefits of accomplishing the goal. You know, very often we end up working without thinking about what's the payoff going to be or more Likely, we say, I'm not getting paid enough to do this. You know, we kind of realize that we haven't charged correctly or we're not being rewarded commensurately for our effort. But the other side of that coin is is just to remind yourself, you know what? This is not an onerous, oppressive situation. This is an incredible opportunity, you know, to create something, to do something notable, to build into the lives of others, to learn, to network. I've always said in my work that life is the same for all of us. It's how we frame it. And maybe one way you overcome resistance is you stop framing your life as a have to and you start framing your life as a get to. You go from this concept of an oppressive obligation to one of an incredible opportunity. Thank you for sharing that. I want to talk just a little bit, too, about what resistance looks like so that we can start to maybe get some more clarity and identify when we're in resistance. Because I can tell you, a lot of times I'm in resistance. I don't know I'm there. I'm not consciously aware of it. And in fact, maybe I'm even in denial that I'm in resistance. I heard an acronym for denial that stands for don't even notice I am lying. But that's really what we're doing when we're in resistance. We're lying to ourselves. And what I do personally, it's not that I say I'm never going to do this thing. I say instead, I'm just going to do it later. So I don't know if if you can relate to that, but if you can, that's definitely a sign or a symptom that you might be in resistance. Resistance shows up in a lot of different ways. And an exercise that I run with my clients quite often is I, I have them do this exercise about identifying their own resistance. So I'd love to do that with you now in the get started now piece of this podcast is to actually sit down and write down How do you behave when you are in resistance? What does that look like for you? So I want you to think about the the last time you had a big goal that was out there and you knew what you were supposed to do, but you just didn't do it. What came up for you? What did you say to yourself? How did you behave? Did you shut down? Did you get frustrated? Did you do like I do and say, I'm just going to get to that tomorrow? But what does it look like for you? I think the more that we can tap into and identify how we behave, 
and then just recognize, oh, that's resistance. Now we, I can think about what Mark was saying and go back to what my passion is and think that through. I can think about my vision. I can think about the why, and maybe I can pull myself out of resistance just by getting into action. Let me interject. One of the most common ways we manifest resistance is we check our email for the 13th time in the past hour. We decide we've got to refill our coffee cup. In the old days when we used pencils, we used to have to sharpen our pencils because certainly we couldn't begin any project without a sharp pencil. You know, the things that we do that keep us from doing the things that we need to do, that's usually how uh, resistance shows up for me. Perfect. Another get started now exercise for you is what goals have you resisted in the past? If you have a goal, a business goal, a professional goal, a leadership growth goal, even a personal goal that seems to keep showing up year after year on your list. So what is that goal you've resisted? I want you to identify it and also identify how you behave in that resistance. Again, this is awareness for you. When you increase your awareness, that allows you to get into action. And then the last exercise we have for you for today is what changes are you currently resisting? So what is it when you sit down and you think about those things that you want to accomplish over this next year, where are you in resistance? There are some things that you probably know that you want to accomplish, things that you should do. And, and as we just talked about, but let's turn those things into a get to do. What do you get to do this upcoming year, but you're currently resisting, which means maybe you're putting it off. You're finding everything else to do other than that goal. And let me just frame up one final idea because now listeners have some specific actions to take. And that is to remember, I didn't call them the three A's in the last session, but I'm going to call them the three A's now. As you look at your goals, as you look at the resistance that's uh, showing up in your behavior, you have one of three options, but you've got to be honest. Don't take the easy way out. The most preferable way is probably to act. If you can't act, if there's some real pervasive reasons why acting isn't feasible, then you might have to adjust. You might have to adjust your plan or your goals so that you can take action. And if you really get honest and you realize that you're never going to have the psychological or emotional momentum to get it done, then you abandon. And that's how power planning works. You look at your goals and your processes and you act. If you can't act, you adjust. And if you can't adjust, you abandon and move on to what's more important. Mark, I think you've given our listeners some great things to think about. You don't want to miss our next session. Our next session is about getting clarity on what you want and creating your power plan. And if you would like to hear more or get more, go to MarkSanborn.com and sign up or go to HeatherChristie.com, join our leadership community, and certainly let us both know what you think about our power planning podcast series. If you like it, please share it. Thank you so much, Mark, and thank you to our listeners. Remember, success begins with your clarity and what you want in life, and we'd love to help you get that clarity.